Hey guys, so this is the exam 4 review for uh, Math 095 and starting off in 10.1 exponential functions. So remember an exponential function looks something like this. Um, we also saw a lot that were like a little bit simpler form like when we were graphing and evaluating. Um, so the basics of this were uh, b is the base, uh, x is the exponent, so we're plugging into the exponent. And should it have an A, and we'll see those a little later in the section, remember that this is the initial value. So that's the starting amount when X equals 0, uh, Y equals A. And that's because if X is 0, this is um, something to the 0 makes 1, and so it makes the output. Okay, so we're starting off with a little bit of graphing. Um, so with these, remember the good points to put in are... Um, negative 1, 0, and 1. And so we're going to pretty much do that table for every one of these graphs. Uh, the reason was that for negative 2, these get really small. For um, anything like 2, 3, 4, these get really big. And so these are pretty much the only points that you can see on here. Uh, for this one, let me write it a little bit bigger. y equals negative 5 to the x. So that it's not parentheses negative 5. It's, it's 5 to the x and then make it negative. So we really just have to plug in for 5 to the x. So 5 to the negative 1, that's uh, 1 fifth, but now negative because of the negative sign. 5 to the 0 would be 1, but negative. And 5 to the 1 would be 5, but negative. So um, we get that same kind of curve. It's just the time it's under the axis and um, heading towards negative infinity. And so I usually graph the easy ones first and then just kind of graph the tail writing by the um, x-axis. So that should look like that. Remember that this can never um, be zero or negative, so we shouldn't see it crossing up over the axis or crossing down if it was going this way. Uh, this next one would be x, y, same thing, negative one, zero, one. And so one fourth to the negative 1 is the same thing as 4 over 1 to the positive 1. So remember, we could flip it and change the sign. So that's 4. Anything to the 0 is 1. And then 1 fourth to the 1 would be 1 fourth. So this one is flipped kind of across the axis. So when x is negative 1, y is 4. When x is 0, y is 1. And when x is 1, y is 1 fourth. So this one's going to look kind of like that. Okay, and these next three I'd have you try. So this is y equals 3 to the x, and x, y, and so negative 1, 0, 1 again. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. Remember that's because when we have a negative exponent, it drops downstairs. Uh, 3 to the 0 is 1, and 3 to the 1 is uh, 3. So we're at um, 0, 1, uh, 1, 3, and then negative one and one third. So that's kind of the more standard looking one. Uh, five to the negative x. So that would be x, y, negative one, zero, and one. So five to the negative, negative one. Let me write that out over here. So that's going to be five to the one or five. Uh, five to the zero is one. And 5 to the, put in a 1, and it shows as a negative 1, so that would be your 1 fifth. And this is actually the same as, um, if I wrote this as 1 fifth x, um, which is similar to the one I did earlier. And that's just because that negative exponent, I could drop it down like this, which would be the same as that. So graphing this, I got negative 1, 5 and then 0, 1, and 1 and 1 fifth. So about like that. So this one is um, y to the negative 1 fifth x, x, y, negative 1, 0, 1. So these are all just going to be negative values because of the negative sign in front. So if I do 1 fifth to the negative 1, that's the flip it over, and then it would become uh, 5, but negative. Uh, to the 0, this would be a 1, but negative. And to the 1, this would be a 1 fifth, but negative. 
So when x is negative 1, uh, y is negative 5. 0, negative 1 right there. And 1, negative 1 fifth. So it looks kind of like that. Okay, and then this next part we're um, going to kind of build an exponential function based on some data. And then a little bit of solving of exponential functions. So for this, this is where we need that definition from the first page. Y equals a, b to the x. So that's what we'll be using in this problem. Um, and remember when a is, um, a is the initial value, so when x equals 0, y equals a. And that's what we have right here. I'll plug it in just to show that that's true. Um, but if I plug in 80 for the y, and I'm trying to solve for the a, b, and then the x is going to be 0. So a times b to the 0. So b to the 0 is 1, and then that means a is 80. So once I know that, and I don't have to do that, I can just look at it and know that, then I can do this part. So I know a is 80, b to the x, and then I can plug in the second point, and so that's going to be, let me start that up here, uh, the y is 327.68 equals um, 80b to the 3. And so I can divide over the 80. And I get uh, 4.096 equals b cubed. And then to undo that cube, I'm going to cube root both sides. So we'll do the cube root. And then that's going to make um, b come out to 1.6. So then that means my equation is putting b back in here. y equals um, 80 and then 1.6 to the x. Um, once you have that, then it's no big thing to plug a 1 in here. And then um, that's going to come out 128. And plug a 2 in here, make sure you go 1.6 squared and then times 80. And that'll be two point or two hundred and four point eight. Uh, this next one is a solve. So the first thing, uh, let me write it a little bit bigger. So the first thing I'm gonna do is divide over that twenty. And then I get uh, 1.8 on this side equals 1 plus r to the fifth. And then to undo the fifth, I'm going to do a fifth root on both sides. And so <clears throat> uh, this I'm just going to leave as that because I, I would put in a calculator. So I'll just say fifth root of 1.8 equals 1 plus r. And I'm just going to subtract the 1 over. And then if you get that put in a calculator, uh, it says two decimal places. So I got, um, and I did four decimal places in the notes, I don't know why. Uh, r is 0 0.12. Okay, and these last couple would be uh, matched problems. So these are the ones I'd have you do. Uh, so y equals a times b to the x. We know that um, a right here is going to be 120. And so then I have the second point. So y is 67.5. a we know is 120. b is what we're working out. And this is squared. So then I can bring the 120 over. And let's see, that makes uh, 0 0.5625 for b squared. And so since it's a square, I'll do a square root. And then b comes out to be 0 0.75. So our equation would be y equals 120 and 0.75x. And if we put in 1, that comes out to 90. 
if we put in the three right here, it comes out to um, 50.625. Okay, and then these two are the solve. Um, so for this first one, we have 200 equals 800, a to the seventh, so I'm going to divide over the 800. And that's going to make um, 0.25 on this side equals the 800s cancel, a to the seventh. And then um, I'll take the seventh root to undo the seven. And then that to two decimals would be A is approximately 0 0.82. And then for this one, we'll divide the 10 over. <coughs> so that'll be 0 0.6 equals 1 plus R to the 11th. And I'll take the 11th root. That's just going to be some number that's not that nice. It's like 0 0.9546 equals 1 plus r. And then subtracting the 1 on both sides will get me um, negative 0 0.045 um, equals r. Actually, since two decimal places, I should probably round 0 0.05. Okay, next we had uh, 10.2, which is finding the inverse of a function, a little bit of graphing. <coughs> so remember the first thing we do when we see the f of x is we're just going to think of it as y equals 3x minus 4. And then to find the inverse, we swap our x and y. And then we just resolve for y. So I'll add the 4 over. And that'll give me x plus 4 equals 3y, and then just divide the 3 on either side. So f inverse x equals uh, this right here, x plus 4 over 3. Um, so if I'm going to graph the, and then the second part of the directions is graph f of x and f inverse x. And so careful on this question on the exam, there's kind of three parts there. That's the first piece of the answer, and we'll graph these two, and that will be the rest of the answer. So I would graph the easy one because this one looks harder. So if x is 0, y is negative 4. If x is 1, y is uh, negative 1. And then I'll just use that table to, and flip-flop it since that's what an inverse is. And that will get me this one. And I can use this as a check. Negative 4 plus 4 would be 0 divided by 3 is 0. Negative 1 plus 4 would be 3 divided by 3 does make 1. So graphing these, um, when x is negative 4, y is 0. And when x is negative 1, y is 1. So I'm just going to extend that line out so I can kind of draw it somewhat straight. And then this other one, when x is 0, y is negative 4. And when x is 1, y is negative 1. So I'll do the thing, same thing and just kind of extend this. And so remember when you're graphing these, you should always see um, that there's a symmetry. So if you kind of divide the line, the uh, graph diagonally, and this is the line y equals x. So it's just like 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Then these should sit right on top of one another if we folded this over. Um, and the graph should be uh, symmetrical. <clears throat> so if your graphs aren't doing that, something's gone wrong, some points in the wrong spot. Number two, we don't have to graph, we just have to find the inverse. So this is really, like I said, y. And we're going to swap our x's and y's and get x equals 2y minus 3 over 4y minus 5. And then first thing I'll do is I'll clear the fractions, because um, I'm trying to solve for y. So 4y minus 5, 4y minus 5. And that at least gets everything up out of the denominator. So then, um, this will be 4xy 
minus 5x equals the numerator on this side. So then right here is where you don't want to go backwards and solve back for x. you got to remember you're solving for y. So I have one here and one here. So I'm going to get my y's on one side. So I'm going to subtract this one over. So I'm going to get minus 2y minus 2y. And I'm going to add this 5x over. So now I had my y's grouped up on one side and everything without a y on the other. And then the trick here is to factor the y out. And here I could have also factored a 2, um, but I didn't really want the 2, I just really wanted the y, because I want to see what I need to divide over um, to get y by itself. So that's why I only factored y. <coughs> and then we'll just uh, divide both sides. And then that cancels, and then what I have here is f inverse x. Okay, these would be the matched problems. Um, so again, this is going to be y, so then this is going to be x equals 2 thirds y minus 1. Um, so I'll add the 1 over. And then to get rid of that 2 thirds, I think I'm just going to multiply both sides by 3 halves. And then those cancel, and that cancels, and I have y by itself. And then I can either leave it like that, with the three halves out front. So I could write it um, y equals three halves parentheses, and then x plus one. Or I could do uh, three halves x plus three halves. And I would take either one of those on the exam. Uh, to graph, I'm going to pick this one, because that looks terrible. So x, y, when x is 0, y is negative 1. When you have a fraction, the trick is just to pick the denominator. Because if x is 3, then I get 2 thirds times 3 minus 1, and those cancel. 2 minus 1 makes 1. So when x is 0, y is negative 1, and when x is 3, y is 1. So it's going to look something like that. And then we'll just do the same thing I did in the last one and flip this table. So negative 1, 0, and 1, 3. So if x is negative 1, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 3. And so that should be about there. And so relatively a straight line. So there would be that axis of symmetry. And then this one is the uh, the one where you have to be careful and factor out that y. So this would be um, x equals 5y minus 3 and y minus 2. And so I'll do the same thing where I use the LCD to clear the fraction. And that's going to get me... Uh, xy minus 2x, and on this side it cancels, so then 5y minus 3. And then I'm going to bring, um, I'm going to rewrite it up here so I have a little more room. Okay, so I'm going to bring the x over this way, I'm going to bring the 5y over this way. So it'll look like minus 5y on both sides. So I'll do minus 5y here, add the 2x over, and then 2x minus 3. And then right there, that's there's the tricky little factoring, factoring of the y. And unfortunately, if you try anything other than this, you just end up kind of cycling around, and you get one y by itself and not the other. So this is really the way to go. And then just uh, divide this over. And so then f of x, or f inverse x, equals 2x minus 3 and over x minus 5. Okay, 10.3 is where uh, we picked up all those little definitions for logarithms. Um, and so we have log form and exponential form. And so that's log base b of x equals y is log form. 
And then remember we do b, it's a swoopy thing to the y equals x. So b to the y equals x. And that's the exponential form. This direction, I kind of think of it as these go the opposite. This one was the one where I think of the kind of the swoopy. And then the, the one that I always used when I was a student was this. Um, it just, I don't know, I was able to keep track better with numbers than a bunch of letters. So I think log base 10 of 100 is 2 because 10 raised to the second makes 100. So that was kind of the one I would write on my margin and try to figure out what I was doing. Um, so that's our log form and our exponential form. And um, and these are both still logarithms. We haven't done an inverse. These are just two forms of the same thing. And then we had a couple of definitions. We had common logs. So remember that's the, write it a little bit bigger, log base 10 of x. We just write log x. Um, and so if there's nothing there, it's an implied 10. Natural log, so that was when this the base was an e, so log base e of x. We don't ever really write that. It's um, ln x. And the last one was our change of base formula, which I'll remind you of that when we get there. Okay, so these first couple are just uh, switching forms, so write an exponential form. So that's uh, 6, let me write that a little bigger, log base 6 of 36 equals 2. So 6 to the second makes 36. And that'd be our exponential form. Uh, this one is 5 to the negative 2 equals 1 25th. So that would be log base 5, so the base stays the same. And it's the other two things that switch places. So of 1 25th equals the exponent, negative 2. Here, that one's a base 4, so it's going to go 4 raised to the second makes x. And now we're solving for x. So 4 to the second equals x, and then 4 to the, sorry, negative second. So that would be 1 over 4 squared, or 1 16th would equal x. And then this one we have, um, that's a 125 down there. So it's 125 raised to the x equals 5. If you can see the 1 3rd, you can just go straight there. If not, you can do um, 125 is 5 cubed with the x, and then 5 is 5 to the 1, and then you can set those equal and solve. 1 3rd. Okay, this next one, that's a 8 down there, so it's log base 8 of 4 equals x. So this would go um, 8 to the x equals 4. And then 8 and 4, I can't write 8 as 4, but I can write them both as base 2. So 2 to the 3x equals 2 squared. And then I can set those equal and do um, 3x equals 2 or x equals 2 thirds. Uh, so number 6 we have, that's an x, so it's x raised to the third equals 7. And so that one's maybe too easy, it's hard. We just uh, cube root both sides. And x equals cube root 7. Uh, for ln x equals 3, um, this is where you kind of want to think of that little invisible e down here. And then the exact solution on this one would be e to the third makes x. And you can leave it right there in the exact form. Um, this one, log, um, no base, so that's really log base 10 of x equals um, log base 2 of 4. So log base 2 of 4 says, what power do I raise 2 to get 4? And that would be squared, so 2. And then I can rewrite this, so 10 squared makes x. And that would be 100 equals x. And these ones are simplified, so that just means they're numbers. So this is um, log base 4 of 1. So what power do I raise 4 to get 1? So that is just a fancy 0. This one is um, log base 8 of 8. What power do I raise 8 to get 8? That would be a 1. And then this one we have um, 
I'll write it a little bit bigger. So what power do we raise five? That's supposed to be a five, two to get five. And so we'll just put all this stuff back. And five squared would make 25, so that'd be a two. And what power do we raise two to get two? So that's all just a one. And what power do I raise six to get one would be zero. And number 12, there's a couple of ways to do that, but probably the most direct one at least would be rewriting this as e to the negative 2. Um, and so remember, if I have e to the negative 2, I'd write it as 1 over e squared. So I'm just going the other direction. And then, um, you know, I'm actually being, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do it using the property we know from the next section, because that's really how I'd think of it. I'd bring the negative 2 down front and then have ln e. And then ln e equals 1. And so that would just be negative 2. And then 13 through 24 are matched problems I would have you try, so I'll go a little bit quicker. Um, so write in exponential forms. So that's 10 raised to the third makes 1,000. Write in log form. So that's going to be um, log, it's 4 cubed. So log base 4 of 64 would equal the exponent, or the 3. Uh, solve for x, so this is 64. Um, so 64 to the x makes 4. And 64 is 4 cubed. That would be 4 to the first. And then 3x equals 1, and x is 1 third again. Uh, for this sign, let's say this would be x to the fourth makes 81. And we're going to take a fourth root. We don't have to worry about any kind of plus or minus because it's in the base of a log. Um, so it can't be uh, a negative. So I'll take a fourth root of both sides. And then that gets me x equals the fourth root of 81 should be 3. Uh, the next one we would go, this is base 5. So 5 to the negative 2 equals x. 5 to the negative 2 is 1 over 5 squared, or 1 25th would equal x. ln x equals 4. So again, think of the little e down here. And then e to the 4th makes x. This one is log base 3 of x equals log base 2 of 16. So log base 3 of x um, equals, what do I raise 2 to to get 16? So this is really just a 4. And then I can say 3 to the 4th equals x, or 81 equals x. And then this last one, uh, sorry, not the last one, just on this page, uh, ln x equals 1.65. So again, think of the little e. So that's e to the 1.65 equals x. And this one, um, on the homework, at least had round to four decimals. Um, so if we did have to, it'd be 52070. Okay, now we have the simplify round. So what power do I raise 3 to get 3 would just be a 1. What power do I raise 7 to get 1 would be 0. And then this one, log base 2, log base 4, then what power do I raise 3 to to get 81? So that's a 4. I should have made some of these come out not 0. Oh well. Um, log base 4, 4. What do I raise 4 to to get 4? That would be a 1. And then what do I raise 2 to get 1? 0 again. Uh, number 24, so we have that exponent. I'm just going to do the one where we bring it down front and write it as 5 ln e, which is really in the next section and then ln e equals 1. So this would just be 5. 10.4 is the property of logarithms, and so we got the three main properties. Um, when we're multiplying, remember, that's where we add the logs. When we're dividing, that's where we subtract the logs. And when there's a power, so there's a little r up here that you can't really see, um, that comes down the front. And so we saw three different kind of problem styles in this section. Uh, the first one was expanding log, the log, uh, where we 
have it this side and we try to write it this way. Um, the second one is the right as the single log where we have something like this and go this way. And then the third thing was uh, log equations. So starting off with expanding using the properties of logs. So the first thing is we have a root like that. Um, and this is log x to the fifth y cubed. And it's square root z. So I'm going to write that z to the one half. You always want to write your um, roots as fractional exponents because we have a property for exponents but nothing for a root. Uh, so then writing this, expanding this out, remember the, the uh, powers are going to become the coefficients. So it's going to be 5 log x. And then if it came from the numerator, it's going to be a positive. If it comes from the denominator, it'll be a negative. So this will be a negative 3 log y and then a negative 1 half or minus 1 half log z. For number two, we have to do a little bit of work to get in in a form where we can use the properties. So this big old cube root, I'm going to go log and then x4, y to the seventh, z to the sixth. And I'm going to think of that as to the one third. And I just multiply this in, and that's the same as taking the cube root. So that would make it look like uh, log x to the four thirds y to the 7 thirds, and then 6 over 3 would make z squared. And then after that, it's just the same as this, so I'll sneak down here with it so I have more room. Uh, 4 thirds log x, and then minus 7 thirds log y, and minus uh, 2 log z. So these two are right as a single log. Um, and so again, when you see the single log, you're going to use the word log once. As people will go log, 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 log. Um, so don't do that. Here we go. So we're going to do um, x to the one third up top because it's positive. And then this is negative, so it's going to be y to the fifth downstairs. And then this one's positive, so then z to the second upstairs. And this is a perfectly fine answer, or you can do cube root x, z squared, y to the fifth also. Either one of those is fine. Uh, here we'd have, again, just log, and then x squared. Uh, this is negative, so y to the third, and z to the fourth because of the negative, um, or alternatively, you could do 4th root z right there. Either one's good. So these are the ones I'd have you guys try. Um, this first one, I have to do a little bit of work. That's a square root of y to the 5th, z to the 7th. Uh, so I'm going to write that as log y5 z7 to the 1 half and then it's over x cubed. And then multiplying those in, I'll get log uh, y to the 5 halves, z to the 7 halves, and x cubed. And then finally expanding, it's going to go, um, that was y, okay. 5 halves log y, and then plus 7 halves log z, and then it'll be minus 3 log x. For this one, um, I'll rewrite that as log, and so again, this is, a, this is a fifth root right here, and so fifth root of 5 would make log x up top, and then I'm just thinking of it as a 1 fifth, so y to the 7 fifths, and the fifth root of 10 would be um, 2. So squared, and you can rewrite that with the one fifth if you need to to get that to here. Um, and then from here, just expand it like I just did. So log x, and that's a one because it's uh, nothing there. So x to the first, and then it'll be minus seven fifths log y, and then minus two log z. And then write as a single log. So log 
1 half x, or you could write square root x, and then it'll be a y downstairs and a z to the fifth downstairs, because they're both negatives. And number eight, we have just be a log. The 1 fourth, I'm going to write it as a fourth root. You could also do a fourth. And then um, the z is also positive, so I might as well do that. So that's a third, so a third root z. And then downstairs would just be a plain y. Okay, so solving log equations. Um, so the first step is to write it as a single log. So I'll just talk through the steps with this one. So this would go log base 12 of x times x minus 4, because of addition, equals 1. And then uh, second step is where it usually goes bad on the test. Um, change the equation to exponential form. And so this is that, you know, log base 10 of 100 is 2, 10 squared makes 100 thing. And so this is 12 to the 1 makes this. And people just disappear the 12 all the time, so you don't want to do that. Um, so this is going to be 12 to the 1st equals um, x times. I'm just going to multiply this as I go x squared and then minus 4x. And so step 3 is if it's linear, x is to one side, numbers to the other. Uh, this is quadratic, so if it's quadratic, get it set to 0 and then factor and solve. So I'm going to subtract my 12 over and get 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 12. And then factoring. Uh, looks like a multiplies to negative 12, adds to be negative 4, so negative 6, positive 2. Uh, x equals 6. Uh, in the quadratic, x equals negative 2, but it doesn't make sense in the original equation. So this one is extraneous because we can't take logs of negative numbers. And so this is going to be um, the only legit solution. Number 10, we have um, log base 3 of x plus 4, and it's minus, so x minus 4. So this is our right as a single log. And then step two, change to exponential form very carefully, because this is where it doesn't go well. So that'll be 3 squared equals x plus 4 over x minus 4. And then I'll multiply both sides by uh, x minus 4. And that's going to get me, this is 9, so... 9x minus uh, 36 equals, um, these cancel, so x plus 4. I'm going to bring the x over, I'm going to bring the 36 over, so that'll look like minus x minus x. And plus 36. 36. So 8x equals that canceled, that canceled, uh, 40, and x equals 5. Okay, and these would be the matched problems. So writing as a single log, we'll have log base 2 of x minus 3 over x equals 2. So 2 squared equals the stuff inside. So 2 squared equals x minus 3 over x, or 4 equals x minus 3 over x. And then from there I can um, multiply both sides by x, clears the fraction. So now 4x equals x minus 3, subtract the x over, and 3x equals negative 3 x equals negative 1, and so x can equal negative 1, because remember, can't take uh, logs of negative numbers. So, extraneous, and this is a no solution. Uh, number 12, we'd have log base 3 of x, x plus 6 equals 3, and then 3 cubed equals the stuff inside. So 3 cubed equals x squared plus 6x. 
it's uh, quadratic, so I want to get everything over to zero. And this is going to be a 27, so I'll just subtract that on both sides. So zero equals uh, x squared plus 6x minus 27, or I factor uh, plus 9 and minus 3 to get the negative 27 and the 6. So x equals negative 9. Mm, nope can't have negatives, so x equals 3 is a good one. Okay, section 10.6 was exponential equations. And so we had a couple of flavors in here. Um, these are the steps for solving the ones that aren't as fun. Uh, there were those ones that were, let me write this a little bit larger, so 27 to the 2x minus 2 equals 9x. Um, there's these kind where the 27 and the 9 can be written with a common base, and then that lets us avoid having to do the whole log both sides thing over here. Um, so this one, let's go 3 cubed, and then the 2x minus 2 is still there, and so it's being raised to a power, so <clears throat> that makes it a multiply. And then the 9x is uh, 3 squared and an x. So then we can dump the bases, and then 3 times 2 is 6x, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and that equals 2x. And then I'm going to subtract the 2x over, and I'm going to add the 6 over at the same time. So that's going to give me 4x equals 6 x equals 6 fourths, or knocking a 2 out of there, would be 3 halves. So this one, unfortunately, we can't do that. Um, so we're going to log both sides. So I'll start with that step. Log of 7, 3x plus 1 equals log 5. And that's our steps up here for solving exponentials. So we log both sides of the equation. Step two is we bring the exponent down front, so if we had like that r up here, it comes down in front. So that's this piece, so it'll be 3x plus 1 times log 7 equals log 5. And then to me, this is where I would just divide over the 7, because this is um, four decimal places. So we're, we can let the calculator do a bit of the work on this. So we'll just divide the log over. And then this is where I would go from here. Uh, 3x plus 1 equals log 5 over log 7. So if I was doing this, i just go uh, log 5 and then divide by log 7. And then I would hit equal, so I didn't have to worry about parentheses, and that would give me a number. And then the next thing, if I was solving, I'd subtract 1 over, so I'm just going to go minus 1. It just copies the answer from the last screen. So then I would have 3x time, uh, equals this number, so I just need this divided by 3. So then go divided by 3. And then there's the answer right there. And so once I got to here, I would just kind of go um, calculator. Uh, minus 1, you know, divide by 3, and you get x equals negative 0 0.0576 to four decimal places. Okay, these two are the match, too. So here we have um, 8 to the 2x minus 1 and 4 to the x plus 3. So 8 and 4, um, I can write those both as base 2, so 8, I'm going to make 2 cubed and then 2x minus 1, 4, I'm going to make 2 squared, x plus 3. And then I can dump the bases and then just set these ones equal to one another. So that's going to be um, 6x minus 3 equals 2x plus 6. And then I'll bring the 2 over this way and the 3 over the other side. It gets me 4x equals 9, or x equals 9 fourths. Uh, for this one, so this is the one where we're going to have to log both sides. So I'll go log 
of 6, and then that says to the 2x plus 1 equals log 11. And then step 2 on that was to bring the exponent down. So 2x plus 1, and then log 6 equals log 11. And then here we would divide the log over. And that cancels. Since on the last one I showed the calculator, on this one I'll show the written out. So then we have 2x, I'm going to subtract this 1 over, equals um, log 11 over log 6, and then minus 1. And then what I would do is I would multiply both sides by um, a half, because we don't want to have a fraction and a fraction. So if I do divide by 2, then I have to simplify this. But if instead, if I just kind of think of it this way, and the 2's canceling, then I can just have that equal x. So that'd be the exact answer. Okay, and at the end of the section, we had the financial problems. Um, you'll have these formulas, so um, you don't have to memorize them. Uh, number 5 goes, how long will it take $15,000 to double? So that's 30000 if invested 8% interest compounded quarterly, so n is going to equal 4 and round to two decimals. So um, that is compounding n times per year because it's quarterly. So the amount that we're going to have will be 30,000. The amount, the principal that we're putting in is 15,000. And so then it goes 1 plus r, so the rate was 8%. We need to make sure to change to decimal for that. And then that's over n, which is 4 for the quarterly. And then to the, this is nt up there, so that's to the 4t. Uh, first thing would be divide over that 15,000. And that will get us 2. And you're certainly welcome to just start the problem with, if you know it's doubling, this side's going to be 2. So you could just really start right here at this step. And then this would be, 4 goes into that, would be 0.02. So that I can simplify that side down to 1.02 to the 4t. It looks a little bit better. And then from here, I will log both sides. So I'm just going to slip them in right here. Then I have log 2, and the 4t can come down front, which is why we're logging, so that we can get the exponent. And then I just have to divide all the stuff out that isn't t. So I'll divide both sides by 4 log 1.02. And then the fours cancel, and the logs cancel. And so if you can successfully get all that in the calculator, that equals t. And that is, I got about 8.75 years. Okay, how long will it take $2,000 to grow to $12,000, 9.5%? Compounded, okay, continuously means it's the... Um, a equals p e to the rt formula when you see continuously. So 12,000 is how much we're getting out, 2,000 is how much we're putting in, e to the r is 0 0.095, and then t. So we'll divide the 2,000 over. Those cancel. Um, this reduces to 6 equals e to the 0 0.095t. And then with this one, because it's e, we want a natural log. And that's because this will simplify down to a 1 in a second. So this is natural log of 6 equals, bringing this down front, 0 0.095t ln e. And that's what I was saying was going to be 1. 
And so then I just divide over the 0.095. And then just toss that in the calculator and that should be T. And I got T to be about um, 18.86 years. Okay, number seven and eight are the match questions. So how long will it take 4,000 to grow to 10,000 if invested 9% compounded monthly, round to two decimals? So this would be 10,000 out, 4,000 in. And that is one um, plus interest was 9%. Uh, compounded monthly, so n is 12, so to the 12 t. Um, I'm going to divide the 4,000 over, and then do a little simplifying. So I'm going to get 2.5 on this side equals, uh, this comes out to 1.0075 to the 12 T. And then from there we'll log both sides. And that's gonna let me bring the 12 T down front. Actually let me come up here with it so I have a little more room. And then I'm gonna divide out all the stuff that isn't T. And so then the 12s cancel, logs cancel, and then t equals this. And if that makes in the calculator, I got 10.22 uh, years. And then uh, how long will it take 5,000 to triple at 8% compounded continuously? So we know it's going to be 15,000, and when we divide it over, it's going to be 3. So that's what I was saying, is you can just set it up e. You know, if it's going to triple, this side's going to be 3. Uh, to the rate, and then T. And we can natural log both sides. Bring the exponent down front. And remember, L and E equals 1, so we just have to divide over the 0.08. I got T to be uh, 13.73 years. So depending on how short the quarter is, sometimes I do the sections as an extra credit, sometimes I do it as part of the course. Um, spring quarter is always a very short quarter, so if it's that one, this was probably an extra credit. Um, if I didn't cover it in class, then it was an extra credit, so it wouldn't be on the exam. If I did cover it in class, then it would be on the exam and plus you would have had homework due on it. So um, this was 10, 10x uh, circles. And so right here is our, I'll write a little bit bigger down here. Uh, so this is our circle formula, which would be given for the exam. And um, HK, remember, was the center, and then R is the radius. So this one is find the equation of a circle centered at negative 1, 2 with a radius of 3. So they gave us our h, our k, and our r. We basically just have to plug in. So this would be x minus, and then it's negative 1. And you're welcome to jump to just plus 1, but I'm showing you the how come here. And then y minus 2 squared equals 3 squared. So this would be x plus 1 squared. And this would be y minus 2 equals 9. And then graphing it, uh, let's see, x is negative 1, y is 2. So there's the center. And then for the radius, we'll just count um, up 3, uh, down 3, right, and left 3. Okay, this one is uh, give the center and radius and sketch graph. 
So the center is going to be at positive 2, negative 3. And then the radius, this is, remember, this is r squared is 4. So plane r is 2. And then graphing, we're going to have x is 2 when y is negative 3. So that's right here. A radius of 2, so up, down, left, and right. Okay, so this is the kind where it's not in the right form, and we have to do a little bit of work. So this is going to be x squared plus 2x, I'm going to leave myself some space, plus y squared minus 2y, and again, leaving myself some space, equals negative 1. And then we're doing um, half of 2 is 1, and 1 squared makes 1, so we're adding 1 to both sides for, this, for the x term. And then same thing with the y term. Half of 2 is 1 again, 1 squared is 1. So notice if it's minus, it doesn't change anything. That's just going to change the factored. Um, but this is still going to be what it is, which is positive. Um, here, x plus 1, quantity squared, uh, y minus 1, quantity squared. A couple of those cancel and left with 1. So this one is going to be... Um, the center is going to be at negative 1 and then positive 1. Opposite sign, so it's showing. And then this is r squared, so r is also 1. So it's going to be just a little circle. x is negative 1, y is 1. There's the center, and up, down, left, right. And then these are the ones that have you guys try. So find the equation of a circle centered at 1, 2 with a radius of 3. So that would look like x minus 1 plus uh, y minus 2 equals 9. So remember, 3 squared for 9. And so graphing that, I have x is 1, y is 2, and radius of 3. Just about like that. And then number five is the complete the square kind. So x squared, put the 2x with it, leave some space. And then y squared, put the 4y with that one, equals 20. And then we'll do half of 2 is 1, and 1 squared will make 1. So there's for x. And then here, half of 4 is 2, and then squared would make 4. So there's for y. And then, let's see, we're going to do x minus 1 squared plus y plus 2 squared, and that would be 25. So the center is going to be uh, positive 1, negative 2, and the radius is going to be 5. So positive 1, negative 2 would be right there. And then just count 5 up, 5 down, right and left. Cool. That wraps up uh, the review for exam 4.